welcome. Uh, welcome to another weekly live session where we talk about all things MBA. I'm excited to be here with you today. I'm Susan Bereshai, founder of C Admissions, for those who are new to this channel. Um, and today we're going to talk about Kellogg's, <clears throat> excuse me, <coughs> apologize, uh, Kellogg's uh, MBA application. Um, wrong time to cough. <clears throat> <laughs> Sorry about that. Well, if you are watching this uh, live, please introduce yourself in the comment section. I would love to hear where you're from, what schools you're targeting. I'm assuming Kellogg's on your list, but um, other schools that you're targeting. Um, and welcome to our channel. If you're new here um, and you like this content, um, this content particularly, give uh, the video a thumbs up. It, allow it just gives us a sense of uh, what's beneficial to applicants who are going through this process so that we can create more content surrounding um, those topics. Um, and if you are um, you haven't subscribed to our channel, uh, please uh, hit that subscribe button. Um, we are continuously providing a lot of value add, particularly through our YouTube, YouTube channel, but also on Instagram as well. So head out to see admissions on Instagram and um, you can see additional content that's posted there. So with that, why don't we get started <clears throat> and going through a few slides that I've prepared as usual um, to discussing Kellogg. So before we dive deeper, um, those that are new to our channel, I want to take a moment to introduce myself and you know what makes me an authority here to talk about Kellogg's MBA. So, I am the founder of C Admissions, a coaching uh, MBA coaching firm focused primarily on supporting young ambitious candidates gain admission to top 20 MBA programs. Um, I have a background um, or my, my academic training has been um, at NYU and Yale. And for the past year, eight years, I have been an admission coach. Um, learning through the process and also um, just really getting a sense of what schools are looking for, but also um, really refining my process on how to support clients to be genuine applicants in this process. What I found is the most successful candidates are the ones who really take the time to articulate who they are and what makes them unique. And I'm a firm believer that everyone has a story to tell and everyone has unique perspectives to their experiences, even if we have similar um, narratives, um, because, you know, I also believe that there's not, no such no new thing under the sun. It's a repackaging of different experiences and it's our own perspective of a given experience that makes a difference. So taking the time to actually understand what your new what your unique perspective is on a given experience is what makes you stand out and i love my job in the sense that i get to coach candidates through that process um, i have a 94 percent placement rate which means 94 percent of my clients gain admission to at least one of their target mba programs and uh, the process is much more enriching than just the coaching, which, of course, that's what I am getting paid for. Um, this process is really helping someone go through uh, self-reflection and really um, an inventory of their experiences. We are taught to only think about the future and where we're heading and not so much taught to think about and reflect on where have we come from and how far we've come. Uh, which is really important to just make you realize that it's, there's so much that more that you can do, um, particularly if you're focused and you have a clear direction and where you want to go. Um, so my my entire process incorporates um, a lot of the uh, qualitative components of just you know thinking about your professional career as well. So with that, let's get to uh, Kellogg. So on my agenda for Kellogg is uh, we're going to look at the class profile. And of course, you're always going to um, compare in a way where you where you stack up against the class profile, um, what the evaluation criteria is for Kellogg, their application components, particularly the written components, which is where most of my focus is, and then live Q&A. 
Along the way, as I'm presenting um, the content, I ask that you write um, questions that you have um, in the comments, and we'll do our best to answer as many as possible. And we've also received um, a great number of questions um, in the registration form, so those um, will be asked, uh, will be answered as well live. So let's dive right in. Let's look at the numbers for Kellogg. So Kellogg has a, about 20% um, admission rate. Um, and oftentimes candidates have a tendency of thinking that, oh, because Kellogg interviews everyone, the chances are higher. Um, Kellogg is looking for that diamond in the rough. Um, if you don't put together a strong application, just because you get to the interview stage does not mean much if your candidacy, if the rest of your application is not as strong. So you really do want to balance. Knowing, of course, is great that you know you're going to get an interview so long as you have two years of professional work experience. But you want to make sure that also when they're reading your application, that they're excited about you and the potential that you have, as well as the contributions you'll be able to make in the Kellogg community. So the class is about 500 students, give or take, every year. Um, GPA is relatively high as far as the averages are, are concerned, is 3.7 out of a 4.0 scale. Um, and the GMAT um, median is 729, which is in line with the top 10 M7 um, MBA program. For those who do not know, M7 are the mega elite MBA programs, which con constitutes Harvard, Stanford, MIT, Booth, uh, Columbia Business School, and Kellogg. Um, and then the GRE is for verbal 162 and for quant 163. So these are relatively competitive scores as far as the class profile is concerned. If you are above or below one of these, you just have to make sure that you have a well-rounded candidacy. So um, other areas can substantiate, for example, for less than 3.7 GPA, right? You, that would mean that you would need a stronger GMAT to uh, or GRE to showcase um, that you are a competitive candidate for, you know, a, a top ranked business school. Uh, the classroom is relatively diverse um, and Kellogg does really value diverse perspectives. Um, and we'll talk more about what they're looking for, um, but a very dynamic, uh, dynamic class. So what is it that they're looking for? Um, they write this right on their website. so. None of this is uh, new information, but it's always really important to just reflect on what exactly it is that they're saying. So they're looking for applicants um, who approach problems with a mix of hard and soft skills. You will see this as Kellogg is a school that really cares about community. Um, as a leader, you are the future of the business world. That's how they're looking at you. Even if you don't necessarily see yourself at the moment, you are going in that direction um, as uh, you know, leaders who is gonna shape the business world. And as a leader, you will need to not only have hard skills and being able to do your specific work, whatever that work may be for you, but also the soft skills to be able to lead other individuals and influence others to um, see your vision and implement your vision. And then um, they seek um, to uh, people who are able to adapt to the evol evolving business world with open curiosity and innovation. Uh, they are looking for people who really want to learn and are genuinely curious. Um, and of course, uh, innovation is something that is a buzzword these days, <laughs> very much so, particularly in the tech, tech space. Um, but uh, at least having the curiosity to wanting to learn and wanting to see how things can be done better is definitely an important trait. Um, the candidate is someone who uh, believes in strong, empathetic collabor collaboration as a way to strengthen work, perspectives, and outcomes. So not someone, uh, they're not really looking for someone who is there just to do the work and leave. They're really looking for someone who is going to integrate with the Kellogg community and is really looking at understanding other individuals with empathy and be able to collaborate effectively to be able to then make the impact that um, your project requires of you. And 
embracing the power of diversity in your teams and networks. This is really important is um, because you're essentially are going to come in with your own experiences and your own perspectives, which are wonderful, but you want to have the curiosity to learn about other people's perspectives and recognize when um, someone else's perspective may be a better approach to this given particular problem, right? Sometimes our egos get in the way, so it's totally normal, uh, part of human um, experience, but having a propensity to really looking at what is um the best outcome and irrespective of who has the answer whether it's you or someone else it's the best idea wins um so the application uh, application uh, essentially uh components uh, involved of course your education test scores personal information, activities you've been involved in, and awards. So activities means more like extracurriculars, um, and then any awards that you've received, both at you know your undergraduate experience or graduate, if you've completed already a, a, another degree, um, as well as awards you've received in your professional environments that you've been a part of. They're looking at your professional experiences, so you will require to add a little bit more, more color to um, what you've done and what you've accomplished. And then, of course, your resume is an important piece, letters of recommendation, essays, several, um, and then the video response. That's part of the application, and after your application comes the interview. In this session, we're just going to focus on the application portal or the application process. So what I'll be covering is the uh, letters of recommendation, essays, and video responses. Um, and then, of course, you can ask as many questions as you would like um, in the comments. So let's go with uh, the letters of recommendation. So Kellogg requires two letters of recommendation. And the letter recommendation questions follow the GMAC common letter recommendation plus a Kellogg-specific question question. So GMAC common letter recommendation questions are how does the candidate compare to other well-qualified individuals in a similar role? Here you're really speaking about your principal strengths. And then the second question is um, give us a, a, a time you've given feedback to the candidate. How did they respond and what's the outcome? Uh, this is of course about uh, your growth. How do you learn and how, uh, like, are you teachable, essentially? And then there's this added question, which is Kellogg has a diverse student body and values students who are inclusive and encouraging of others with different perspectives and backgrounds. If you look at what I just mentioned earlier about what Kellogg is looking for, this is the wording specifically of what they're looking for. So please tell us about a time when you witness the candidates living these values. So they're not only looking for from you to tell them how you um, are uh, uh, thinking about diversity and how much you bring other people to the fold. They're also looking to hear about that from your recommenders. And you have two recommenders and each one of them is going to give their, their unique perspectives to your um, uh, to your ability to um, uh, encourage others and be inclusive um, team member. So now if we look at the essays, uh, Kellogg has two required essays. Um, one essay, if you're a reapplicant, although I'm not gonna talk about that one here, um, and then an optional essay if there's anything else additional that you want to be speaking about, which I won't be covering here as well. So this is just the main application. Um, so question one is Kellogg leaders are primed to tackle today's pressing concerns everywhere from the boardroom to the neighborhoods. Tell us about a time in your life where you've needed a, combine, a combination of skills to solve a problem or overcome a challenge. What skills did you use and what did you accomplish? They are really looking for you to be able to show a dynamic person who is able to use the quantitative and the qualitative, so the hard skills and the soft skills, the combination of the two. So think about an experience where you needed the hard skills um, knowledge, um, and then also you uh, you have to adapt um, or you have to leverage your soft skills to be able to get to the next um, next level of the project. But what's important here is that they're also looking for that thoughtful person, the thoughtful leaders, 
who are also looking to continuously grow. So they're asking specifically, um, what did you accomplish with this? Obviously, it's a, it, you know, we, we want individuals who are accomplished. But an element here that it's not necessarily asked, but it would be really good for you to incorporate is what did you learn from this experience? Because it is in the challenges that we learn how to evolve, how to do things better. Um, you know, if, if everything went really well, then there's not much learning going on. But it's in the challenges where we are challenged, for lack of a better word, to think differently and solve problems. The second question is, at Kellogg, our values are based on research that concludes organizations comprised of leaders with various backgrounds and perspectives outperform homogenous ones. How do you believe your personal and professional experience to date will help you enrich the Kellogg community? Again, here they're looking for um, leaders who are um, who bring in different perspectives, uh, but are also um, encouraging of others. So you are going to look at an experience that you've had where you've worked with others, you brought in your perspective, but also you incorporated other people's perspectives into the mix to come up with the best possible solution for that given problem you were solving. Um, then you, because we do need an example, right, of how you've done this in the past. And this is, uh, if you watch other my videos, um, you will hear me say this often, um, every essay will require at least one example to illustrate you in action, which is what the admission team is looking for. So I would encourage you not to go into all what you're going to do at Kellogg without substantiating that with how you've done this in the past, because that's the only way they will see that this is not a theory, but actually you have done this before and you know how to do it at Kellogg as well. And then you're going to look at um, how that spe specific experience um, has influenced um, or uh, how that specific experience will add to the Kellogg community. Um, these are your, um, you know, your, 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 your experiences. Um, this is your perspective. Um, this is uh, essentially allows you to show Kellogg how or what, what values you are bringing to the collective. And business schools are looking at every single candidate that's coming, uh, that's that makes up the cohort. Um, they're looking at them from the perspective of what are you going to add? How are you going to teach your peers um, from your perspective as well, right? So you want to show them that you have something valuable to add here. Then we have um, the video responses. So Kellogg's um, application constitutes of the application portal, as we covered, as well as the essays and the resume and test scores and all of those things. Once you submit um, your application, and let's say you submit on deadline, you have 96 hours um, to complete a video or, or video responses to three questions that they're going to be asking. Um, they're looking to really get to know you, how you interact, um, and you more than um, a curated response, right? So um, typically the questions are um, around, you know, introduce yourself, um, why Kellogg, right? If you notice none of the questions that I covered in the essays in particular, um, did ask you about your goals, right? And here is going to be a question around your goals. Um, but then also it's going to be a question around a challenge that you've encountered and um, how you're going, um, uh, how that challenge has um, uh, influenced you in a particular way. Typically, you the, 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 the video component, um, you will get a link once you submit your application. And the link will, will take you to a platform where you have an opportunity to practice um, your responses to questions. Um, so it's just practice. Those are not the questions you will specifically receive, um, but it allows you to really get familiar and comfortable with the platform. Once you start the official questions, you can't retake. So it's a one-shot deal. So you want to make sure that you are able to think about your responses in 20 seconds that you get to prepare, and then give your full response in the 60 seconds that you are given to respond. 
what's really important here is that you really practice and have thought about this in advance, um, about these questions in advance, have put together at least a few notes and think about how you're going to respond, but also recognizing what does it mean to respond in one minute? Um, we understand what that means theoretically, but you have to actually practice delivering a response in one minute because you will see just how much or how little space you have to incorporate some details. And what happens if you don't respond fully in that one minute is the video will cut and you won't be able to have fully given your response to the business school. So there's a practic there's practice component to this piece. So with that, um, a few final tips on essay development. So choose examples that showcase collaboration for Kellogg specifically. These can be team, uh, your, your specific team in your department. It could be cross-functional or cross-departmental, but it could also be if you worked on teams on an international, like if you're working for a large organization that has teams in different parts of the world, you can talk about that collaboration as well. Showcase um, a propensity to learn from diverse perspectives very important, um, and identify why Kellogg is the right program for you. Not just why Kellogg, because it's an M7, because it's a top-ranked institution, they know where they stand. Um, they want really for you to tell them why Kellogg is the right place for you and your goals. And then, of course, make sure specifically about your writing that you are writing compelling materials, the message is clear and the content is very concise using the most um, uh, appropriate words for what you're trying to communicate, which means you will require several iterations of editing. Um, with that, um, I would like to uh, invite um, uh, those of you who are going through this application process um, to our next week's session where we'll cover Booth's MBA program, the full-time MBA program. And um, if you are thinking about Booth, uh, we'll be talking more about that one next week. So a, um, a registration link will show up on the screen as well as is going to be in the chat. Um, also, if you are um, going through this process and find um, it a bit confusing, um, uh, and need support, need guidance, um, I encourage you to reach out. Uh, we can talk about your profile um, and um, also how we can support you. Uh, the, you can scan the, the QR code on the screen or um, reach out. There's a link in the comments as well as on the screen um, that you can um, request a consultation with me. It's typically about 30 minutes. We talk about your background. We talk about what schools you're looking at, your, your, your test scores and that kind of detail, your goals. And then we talk about how we can, um, you know, what are areas that you're struggling with and, and if it's a good fit. Wonderful. So I'm going to uh, stop sharing my screen and move my, um, other screen in front so that I can actually see the questions. Um, so while I do that, I encourage you to write your questions in the comments so we can answer them as quickly as possible. Okay. Wonderful. All right, so let's go to questions. Um, I apologize if I'm going to mispronounce your name. So Opemi, hopefully I said it right, from Nigeria, welcome. Uh, and uh, you're, 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 you're joining from Paris. Oh, I, I have a few friends that are there now and um, the pictures look lovely. Uh, can't wait to go. Uh, well, enjoy it. So let's dive into the questions. I'm just gonna in enlarge my screen because Okay, so what industries and sectors do most Kellogg graduates enter after completing their MBA? Um, this question came in uh, through the registration form. Um, so essentially, um, the, for any one of the schools, there is a lot of, uh, of emphasis you're going to see in um, consulting, technology, and finance. Um, just about two days ago, um, Kellogg um, uh, published an article uh, talking about their early sort of review of where their MBA cl class of 2023, um, as far as what jobs they received. 
Um, there's very promising um, as far as uh, uh, salaries are in, involved. So increase in, in, in base salaries um, has jumped by $10,000 uh, annually. Um, and what they've also seen, which is not surprising because they have put in a lot of emphasis on finance um, and pairing students um, with financial uh, professionals that are alumni of the schools for mentorship and really make sure making sure that they're trained. So um, finance careers have have increased from the preliminary numbers from 16 percent um, to 22 percent, um, which is really great improvement. There is also a lot of talk on private equity. Um, so those individuals who had an interest in that has been um, really good um, outcomes. Um, but if we look at the class of 2022, um, about 38% of the class went into consulting, about, um, I mentioned 16% in finance and 24% in tech. Um, so now, um, obviously, consulting is mm, standard across the board. There, that number is always going to be high because a lot of students uh, do use an MBA to make that pivot, but are looking for consulting for an opportunity to really explore what areas that they're interested in. So that number is going to remain. But outside of that, I would say um, tech, a lot of emphasis has been put in tech and a lot of connections in with the West Coast um, are in place. So technology is going to be great. Um, and then finance now, uh, particularly those that are interested in um, private equity are going to be really um, receiving a lot of um, opportunities at Kellogg to prepare themselves for that next stage. Um, wonderful, next question. Uh, perfect, so my question is, um, if you have any advice for a reapplicant to Kellogg? Absolutely, um, happy to answer that. Um, so when reapplicants are um, reapplying to any given school and particularly Kellogg, you first wanna look at your last year's application or whenever your last application was and look at what has changed since then. Uh, you do want to make sure that you are incorporating um, uh, areas where you think you didn't do so well. If you had an opportunity to get some feedback, that's always wonderful. And you want to show how you have incorporated that feedback into your prepara preparation for this next application. Uh, Kellogg does ask you specifically what changed since you last applied. And there you want to reflect on that rejection. And not from a perspective of, I was so mad that I was rejected, but rather from the perspective of, actually, I learned from this experience, right? And reflecting on, um, what has changed, right? What have you done differently? Sometimes applicants keep the same goals that they've had last last application cycle, but other times they refine those goals, so make it a little bit more specific. And then other times they change because they've had new experiences that look different now than it did last year, and that has influenced their decision. So that's one area. Other areas is uh, are um, you know your experiences themselves. So. If last year you were not successful and you didn't have, let's say, um, a lot of teamwork opportunities to showcase that in your application, well, that would might have been a huge reason why you were rejected from Kellogg, especially after watching this presentation, recognizing how much teamwork is valued there. So you may want to consider this time around to look at what have um, you know? What experiences have you had that your uh, that you can share? How how much you've grown and from receiving insights from different perspectives and different uh, ways of doing business. So look at what you have done since you've applied. If you've taken classes, if you've retaken your GMAT or GRE, indicate all of those um, all of those elements in your reapplication. And then of course everything else is going to be new. So you need new essays, you need new letters of recommendation, even if it's from the same person, new content. Um, and um, I would say, you know, if you're working with a coach, have your coach really guide you through the process step by step. Make sure that they have read your previous application. Um, and if you're working by yourself, um, have as many friends as, as possible read your material and give you feedback. Take everything with a grain of salt because they are looking at it from their perspective. But... Um, they can give you new insights that you may have not thought about as you're writing your materials. 
Wonderful. Okay, I'm going to make my, my responses faster. <laughs> Does professional qualifications C like CPA or CFA help compensate for below average GMAT scores? How can I improve in chances? Um, so CFA um, and CPA definitely help. Um, 670 is somewhat low. Um, so we're talking about 60 points below the class average. So that's a drastic um, uh, number. So I would say um, re try to retake it um, because, uh, uh, you know, if, if um, uh, the chances are going to be low, you want to at least get to a 700 and then your CPA and CFA can really help bolster that number. Um, so I would see if you can work with a tutor to help you, um, increase that score and just write, find, you know, I, this is easy to say and hard to do, but find the right tutor who can help you get to that 700 number. Um, and not all tutors are made equal. So, um, really look for, for people that, you know, you trust, um, that have, uh, used those tutors and have been able to get the scores that they're looking for. Perfect. Um, what does diversity mean here in context of SA2? Do you mean to have worked with diverse set of people from different nationalities or just people with diverse perspective? The latter. So not everyone has exposure in working with people from different, uh, from international backgrounds, right? So um, it wouldn't be fair to all be judged equally in that way. Um, however, um, you should at least have uh, worked with people from diverse perspectives. Um, so it could be working in a team that is made up of, um, you know, engineers and uh, marketers and uh, someone who is bringing in new perspectives and new ways of looking at a problem. Um, so those are ways that you can showcase diversity without necessarily needing to um, specifically say, they were from these different nationalities. We are over time, so I'll end here. Thank you all for being here, for, for asking such wonderful questions. Um, I encourage you to reach out. Um, uh, we are going to uh, reach out for a consultation if uh, this is something that you are looking for support for. In, in further detail, um, uh, but uh, you know, if you're if you're going through the application process and you need more um, guidance on different schools, um, definitely join us. Uh, next week we're going to talk about Booth, but we do have some additional sessions that we've done in the past where we talked about different um, different uh, MBA programs. So I encourage you to look at our channel and uh, go through those uh, school specific um, uh, recordings. Thank you again, and I will see you next week.